Today I'm going to be giving you some tips on painting a realistic jack-o'-lantern in acrylics. Before we jump into the painting, if any of you are interested in updates on my reef tank, I will have those at the end of the video. If you are supporters over on Patreon, make sure to head over where you've got the two hour real time version of this tutorial available for you now. If you are unfamiliar with Patreon for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my weekly one to two, sometimes three or longer hour tutorials. I have over 200 of them available for you to watch right now, plus a new one every single week. I will have links in the video description there. I've also got a free two hour long demonstration of a Margate and colored pencil. If you wanna see if my style of teaching on Patreon is something that's going to be of interest to you, you just have to head over to my library and you get access to that for free instantly. For this one, I am working on a Fredericks watercolor canvas board because they are so, so smooth. It's great when you want a lot of very, very fine detail and for airbrushing. And just for transparency, I am sponsored by Fredericks. This canvas was provided to me by them. So the first thing that I did on this one was just paint whatever color you want for the background. I went with this muddy olive green color, have some black mixed in there. I just need it to be soft. It doesn't really matter what color you go with, if you wanna do purple, whatever. I started with that base and then I used transfer paper. I drew out my pumpkin on a piece of tracing paper so that I could position him perfectly where I wanted him on my canvas, then used white transfer paper. And I'll have a link to all these supplies in the video description. But I used transfer paper to transfer the image onto the canvas. And this is going to be especially helpful later on on when I paint over all of the lines that I have there. But I airbrush the background so that I get a little bit more depth where you feel like you're really the, focused on the pumpkin. And I started when I airbrushed the background, which is the same that I'm gonna do here on these bits of firewood. I painted them white first, and then I used transparent paint to essentially glaze color on top of it. It's just a lot easier than trying to mix the perfect color or whatever color that you want right off the bat. So again, doing the same thing here, this is actually more of a gray color. I've mixed the unbleached titanium white with some black and the, my brain just shut down, burnt sienna. That's that reddish brown color that you see there. So I've just kind of made a, a grayish tone. It doesn't really matter. And in general, when you're painting, don't get too worked up over making the perfect color. The color being perfect is not what's going to make your work look more realistic, assuming that's your goal. If you're going for realism, you're gonna get that by one, having an accurate drawing, which on this is not important. It, does not need to be terribly accurate, but more so on anything else, getting your contrast right, getting your values right. Are your darks dark enough? Your lights light enough? That's what's going to make all the difference in the world in making your work look more realistic. If you have poor values, if everything's just sort of mid-range, you don't have your darks too dark, your lights too light, your work is going to be very boring to look at and it'll have a kind of cartoony feel. So if you find that you are trying to make something look more realistic, but you keep coming out with something that looks cartoony, one of the main reasons that will cause that is not having your values correct. Dark's dark enough, light's light enough. Now, of course, there are other things that you want to watch for, like having a solid foundation drawing. You're, you want that accurate drawing in the first place, unless you're painting something like this and it's not a huge deal. But those values are what matters. Don't get yourself worked up so much about picking the right color. I could pick the perfect shade of orange, but what difference would it make? He'd look like a cartoon if I painted that everywhere. Look at the, the finished painting there. I've got yellows. I've got unbleached titanium white. I've got a lot of magenta that I'll end up pulling into this. There are so many colors that you're going to use. And it's, again, not really about the color so much as the values. So just keep that in, in mind when you're painting. Do not work yourself up over picking the perfect color. It really doesn't matter. You want to get your values right. Dark's dark enough, light's light enough. That is going to make the biggest difference in your work. I want these bits of firewood to look like they've had a saw go through them. They've got these sketchy lines all over the place. And this reference photo comes from Pixabay. I will put a link in the description if you wanted to paint this one as well. And see, just building up sketchy lines. And I started with that mid-range gray, and now I'm adding darks and lights on top of that. Not worrying about color yet, just the values. And building up details, of course. And see how very sketchy I'm being here normally. I don't recommend being super sketchy on your work, but this is one of those times where that's going to give you the best results. 
Now I'm moving on to glazing some color onto these guys. So I've mixed some yellow, I've got some burnt sienna, there's a bit of magenta in there, I just kind of made a muddy brown, and I am mixed that with quite a bit of water and I'm glazing this over. Now you do not want to mix an opaque color like white or I think the lighter yellow that you see on there is Naples yellow. Those are very opaque colors. You don't want to use your opaque colors in most cases for making something that's going to be a glaze because that's not really a glaze, they're too opaque. You want translucent colors. So like my yellows, my magenta, that burnt umber, which I keep forgetting the name on. That's why I keep pausing every time I say that. Those are the colors that I want to use for glazing. And for me, when I glaze, more often than not, I just use water to thin the paint. You can use glazing medium if you like that, but I, use, in most cases, like the results I get better just from thinning with water. Again, just glazing a bit more with the brownish tone, just a muddy, again, doesn't matter what color it is, does not need to be perfect. And if you compare this to my original reference photo, I hype up the contrast a lot more on my paintings usually than what the reference photo has. And it's a beautiful reference photo, but I like the results better when you even, you hype that contrast up just a bit more. I think it makes the work look a lot better. And you'll see that, not so much here on the firewood, but once I start working on the pumpkin, you're really going to see that. Now remember when you're painting, this is a layering process. This is not a situation of just put the right color in the right place, not a paint by number. You're going to layer on top of layer on top of layer and watch how horrible these initial layers look. That's normal, that's okay, that does not mean you did anything wrong, it just means you're not finished yet. So I'm starting by mixing my Naples yellow and my titanium white together just to get this really kind of opaque base. Now I don't want this to be perfectly smooth. See all these brush strokes I have in here? That's great. That's going to make it look like I added extra detail when really it was just sloppy brush strokes. Now I want my outer edge of the pumpkin to be very smooth, but the intersection, I don't. Now all of this paint too is mixed or thinned at least a little bit with water. I almost never use paint straight out of the tube without thinning it with water. Water. So I let that dry completely, just got my base there. Now I'm going to start layering my oranges in there. The paints that I'm using are Liquitex Basics, and these especially the oranges and yellows are very, very translucent. Most of them anyway, very translucent, which I love because I paint by doing a lot of glazes, which gives your work more depth in the end. And I've heard people complain that it's too translucent. Well, you know, there's a technique where you want translucent, which is what I'm doing here. So it's going to take quite a few layers to get this built up to what I want. But in the end, when you see this painting in person, it's got a lot more depth because of that. We're just going to go ahead and layer another on top of this. And I use a hairdryer on high heat, full blast, about a foot away from the canvas to dry my painting. I do not recommend using any other sort of heat tools because those can cause the bubble, the paint to start to bubble up. I mean, acrylic paint is plastic, so you don't want to melt it. You don't want to go too hot. But I've never had any problems using the hairdryer. You don't want it too close. It looks closer to the canvas than what it actually is in person. But about a foot away is, is has always been safe for me. So here is where using that tracing and transfer paper is so handy. I don't have to draw this over again. Areas where I painted over where my lines are going to go, I already drew that out. Why draw it again? Take that same tracing paper and now I can just use that transfer paper, transfer it right onto the canvas. It makes my life so much easier. It saves a lot of time. I only had to draw the pumpkin once. I don't have to keep redrawing things that I painted over as I layered. Now again, look how cartoony this looks. Look at what it's going to end up looking like in that final photo there, final um, painting. You're going to have ugly layers. You just keep layering. And there's almost every single time I paint something, I hit a point where I think, huh, I don't know if I can pull this one off. It looks pretty terrible. Every single time. Always finish it. Keep working. Keep layering until it looks good. Otherwise, you're never going to move past that feeling of, I don't think I can pull this off. Just keep layering. One of the biggest mistakes I often see artists make is they call things finished too soon. They get maybe a quarter of the way through the painting and think they're done. There's paint everywhere. It's done, right? No, keep, keep layering. Keep painting until it looks how you want it to. If you have a bad layer, let's say you get to a point, you do a layer and it looks worse than the previous layer. doesn't matter. You're not finished yet. Keep layering. Now, when I, I do a lot of shading on oranges, 
I rarely use very much black. Now, I, this is a case where I will end up using black on this for some of the shadows. But normally, I jump to magenta first. If I'm shading oranges or yellows, magenta is normally, or I think in the Liquitex Basics, the color I'm using here is deep violet. But that is the color I, I, I will normally go to when shading oranges or yellows. You're going to get more depth. It's not going to end up as muddy. If you blend gray, the black color on top of orange and yellow, you tend to get a very muddy look. Now, for this guy, there there is a time where that works um, for the base. I'll, I'll do a lot of that with airbrushing, but don't, don't always jump to black for your shadows. Try purples, try magentas and violets and, and these colors first and see if you can get the right look that way. Usually that's going to look better than black. And again, there are always exceptions, but more often than not, those are going to be your go-to colors for shading oranges and yellows. So here I'm using my unbleached titanium white. Now look at how I'm leaving my brush strokes showing. This again is adding to what will look like detail, extra details. And I'll glaze yellow over them, but it makes him look kind of shiny. Right now it's very dull, but it'll make him look very shiny and just give you that extra detail, which really is just messy brush strokes. Now the inside of the mouth and the eye, I did start to put the smoke in there. That was done with transparent mixing white. Liquitex Basics does make that now. I used to have to use the Liquitex Heavy Body. I don't love the Liquitex Heavy Body. It dries so fast on my palette. It's very thick. I have to thin it a lot with water. It's not really meant for my style of painting is why. It's not that it's not a good paint. It's just meant for more, you know, when you're you applying the paint very thick, maybe with a palette knife or very heavy brush strokes. So now that the Liquitex Basics makes a transparent mixing white, that is definitely my go-to paint when I want that. So I let that dry. Now I'm using just plain white and I'm going to go ahead and airbrush my smoke coming out of this. Now, if you do not have an airbrush, you can still do this painting. But what I would recommend is use that transparent mixing white to start building up the smoke. And then where areas where you're going to want it to be really, really opaque, very, very white, that's where you'll switch over to your titanium white. But for the most part, as you're layering this, if you're not using the airbrush, try the transparent mixing white until you need it to get more opaque and then switch. If you start out with your regular titanium white, it can look good, but it's harder to get that smoky look. Now I'm using black. And see what I said? Sometimes black is, is a good choice. So I used the black on the bottom area of that pumpkin, really building up the contrast. Now the lights that I, I have on my easel do wash everything out quite a bit. It makes it perfect so that I can see what I'm doing while I'm painting, but on camera, everything looks a bit washed out. So my color saturation really is a little bit darker than what you're seeing on the, the video here. It really looks more like the pumpkin you're seeing on the finished photo of the painting. Now I'm glazing, so mixed, I thinned down this yellow with some water, and I'm glazing that right over those highlights that I did. Let's make them a little bit brighter with some more, that one is actually Naples yellow. The Naples yellow is fairly opaque. It's one I'm going to, I believe it's your most opaque of the yellows. And I've got some orange mixed with magenta as I start building these shadows and the, the creases or indents on the pumpkin. And if his teeth aren't perfect, if everything's not perfect, it doesn't matter. I mean, it still looks like a jack-o'-lantern. It's not like when you paint a human portrait where if the teeth or the nose or something is off, everyone notices. This, you're pretty free if you don't have it drawn perfect. It's This is one of those cases, it's not a big deal. So there is the finished painting. Again, I will have links to the supplies that I used, to the reference photo that I used, all of that in the video description. And if you wanna follow along with this tutorial in real time, this is available for you over at Patreon. I've been getting a little bit more algae, some green hair algae than I normally do. So I decided I needed to go and get some additional members for my cleanup crew for my reef tank. So I headed off to Aqua Studio Aquarium in the colony. This place seriously tests my self-control because I want to buy so much stuff. Look at all this coral. But I'm moving in just about a month, little over a month. So it's kind of stupid for me to continue to add more stuff to the tank that I'm going to have to move. I'm trying to keep it easier on myself. Oh, self-control is tested. Definitely do not have more room for fish. My tank is only 13 and a half gallons, so I have to wait till I upgrade, but there's a lot. Of, they have a lot of critters that I want to come home and live with me, like a tail spot blenny. I really, really, really want one of those guys in the future. Not yet. Must wait.
Look at all of these plants. They get their plants. These are from Dustin's Fish Tanks. You can also order online. I'll put a link to, the, to his site in the, the video description. Definitely going to be picking up some of those for my beta tank once we move. Now for what I actually came for, cleanup crew members. So these are the guys I came home with, three Sarah snails and a fighting conch. They are currently being acclimated to my water so that the salinity matches, the temperature matches, all the, the water chemistry and stuff. I don't wanna just dump them into the tank cause that could throw them into shock. So we're gonna spend about a half hour or so acclimating these guys to my water. I oh know, exciting, right? Now that they're acclimated and in my fish tank, this is Brandon. He got to work on the algae doing his job right away. He's probably my favorite new addition. Look at those funny eyes. He is a fighting conch and absolutely adorable. And that rock that he's working on about five minutes before I shot this video was covered in algae. He has that just completely wiped out. Really good little worker there. Seriously, how adorable is that face? He's so cute. The other three snails that I put in the tank, they have buried themselves into the sand, so I don't see them as often. They mostly come out at night. And as you can see, my mushrooms are doing really, really well. I have another rock I need to stick in there into the tank so that they can grow onto that because they're spreading pretty quick. So overall, tank is doing great other than a little bit of extra algae that I didn't want in there. But I think this guy's going to solve that for me. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all my, wow, that didn't come out right, with all of my new videos every single week. You may also wanna click on that bell icon, little notification guy, because YouTube is pretty bad about notifying people when a new video goes live.